Welcome to Pedal Battles on Fret Tips. A matchup of two pedals, and in the end, only one is left standing. Now, this time, we'll be looking at basic loopers the TC Electronic Ditto and the Boss RC1. I've had plenty of loopers along the way the Digitech Jamman, the Jamman XT Express, and the XT Solo, the latter one is still on one of my boards, and the Boss RC30. But these two are the bare-bone offerings from two of the biggest contenders in the looping game. Round 1. Looping Time Now looking at looping time, the Ditto gives you 5 minutes of looping time, with unlimited overdubs. That's plenty of time to get your ideas flowing and put down some interesting chords, a melody, a bass line and some harmonies. The Boss, however, boasts 12 minutes of looping time, which is almost two and a half times more than the Ditto. Another one up is the boss's full stereo ins and outs over Ditto's mono. That makes boss better suited for stereo effects and keyboards. Clear winner of round one, the boss RC1. Round two, ease of use. The Ditto is very intuitive. With its single switch and multicolor LED, there isn't much you have to learn to get you started. Single press for recording. Another press to play the loop. Press again to overdub. If you mess something up, just do a long press and undo the last layer of overdubbing. If you change your mind and want to bring it back in, long press again. Stopping requires a double press. If you want to stop and delete the loop immediately, do a double press and hold the second press a bit longer to wipe it. Otherwise, you can do a loop delete once you stop it with a separate long press. Just keep in mind that after you stop the loop, a press will engage the loop playback again and the wipe will occur after a second or so of loop playback. So if you don't want that to happen, train yourself to use the double press with the longer second press during playback to do an immediate wipe, or as the manual suggests, once you stop the loop, do a very quick double press with the second press longer, but the loop will still sound out for that tiny fraction between the two presses. There is a way to work around this if you really need a quiet loop wipe. Once you stop the loop, you can turn the loop level to zero and then do a long press to clear. Just make sure you turn the loop level back up when you want to use the looper again. And that's it for the ditto. The LED is super straightforward, red for loop recording and overdubbing, green for playback. Blinking green indicates a recorded and stopped loop. A single blink occurs when the full loop comes back to the starting point and when you delete or redo an overdub. The boss is very similar in this aspect. Single press to record and you can see the circular LED light up and rotate. Press again to engage loop playback and overdub as the circular LED counts the entire loop length with alternating green and red lights green indicating playback and red indicating recording. Press again to go out of overdub mode into loop playback with only green lights counting the loop. Now deleting and redoing an overdub is achieved by long pressing for two seconds and stopping the loop is done by a double press within one second with the LED indicator flashing red or green to register the overdub phrase delete or redo. You can change the looping modes on the boss, but more on that in the round coming up. That's mostly it for both looping pedals as it comes to ease of use. While both have the basic looping functions laid out in a clear and easy way, the circular LED indicator on the boss gives it a slider edge over the ditto. Winner, boss. Round three, additional functionality. You can change the recording and stop mode on the boss, 
so that instead of going from recording straight into overdub, you can go from recording into loop playback and then overdubbing as it is on the ditto. For that, hold down the pedal switch as you power up with a 9 volt power supply and the LED indicator will light up with the upper half for recording into overdub and lower half for recording into playback lighting up in red. Pressing the pedal switch twice within one second will change the mode. Then press the pedal switch and you can choose the stop mode. The upper half of the LED indicator lights up green for the default setting. Double press stops the loop. Press the switch twice fast and the lower half will light up green, indicating the single loop phrase stop mode. Meaning that once you double press, the loop will play out, stop and delete. To cancel that command during playback, do a long press and the loop will continue. Changing the modes on the boss will make recording mode identical to the ditto and expand looping functionality a step further with the different stop modes. There's also a third mode you can change on the boss, the LED display mode. The default will count down the loop indicated with the upper half of the circle lit up in red and green. Switching that to the lower half, the LED will rotate during playback and blink once the loop restarts, once again making it more similar to the ditto in that respect. Quick tip, if you're using the boss with a battery, there is a way to power it up while holding the switch down, even though the battery is located under the switch stomper. In that case, have the pedal equipped with the battery, press and hold the switch, plug into the output A jack, without that the pedal does not power up at all, and voila, battery power up with the press switch. Another thing to keep in mind, the Ditto and the Boss have a current draw of about 100 milliamps, so battery time on the Boss is pretty limited, at around 3 hours of mono use, and stereo will shorten that time span. Big expansion of Boss's functionality is the additional footswitch jack, which transfers the stop and undo redo functions to the external footswitch, making everything even easier. Now on the Ditto, you have an extra USB port for updates, but so far there has been only one update to remove a game range issue and that's about it. Another win for the boss. Round 4. Looping quality. Both loopers have the ability to save your uncleared loop if you shut them down, and neither pedal has quantizing functionality, that means cutting your loop to fit a certain tempo. But the ditto is mono and boss is full stereo on the inputs and outputs. And with stereo there's a neat trick that can help you get a clearer audio image if you can use two amps. Connect two amps to your looper outputs and record a loop using the left input, going to the first amp, then plug your guitar into the second input and play over the loop using the second amp. The problem using a single amp is that your entire playback output goes in there and sometimes a louder solo will eat up the entire headroom, making the rhythm loop dip in volume to compensate. It's a lot like plugging two guitars into one amp, there's only that much headroom you can split between the two. When it comes to actual audio quality, I'm going to have to give it to the ditto. The unit is true bypass and I'm not sure if it's psychological or there actually is a difference. The 24-bit playback somehow sounds clearer than the boss with 16-bit playback. Plus the bypass sound on the ditto feels less compressed, with higher frequencies completely intact, especially with the acoustic guitar. And when it comes to looping, I think that is the most important thing for the looper, and that is pristine audio playback quality. And that's why I'm giving this round to ditto. Round 5. Qualms and Quibbles There's a couple of things that bother me about each of these pedals. The Ditto is super small, but this nano or micro size makes this pedal taller than it is wide. And if you stomp it a bit from the side, well, you will topple it over. And if you use too much stomping power and you're using patch cables with stray jacks, you might have to say goodbye to those jacks and your pedal inputs. Just make sure you're using flat jack patch cables and quality velcro, cutting it right to the very edge of the pedal. Might want to think about the even more powerful 3M dual lock strips. Another thing about the ditto you should know, there's no battery power. And that kind of makes sense as the pedal this small could fit a battery only if 
there were no circuitry inside. If you want a neat workaround for this, check out one of the previous Thread Tips videos where I explain how to use a battery with a 9 volt input. Okay, on to the boss. The main thing that annoys me on boss pedals in general, but on this looper even more so, is the soft switch. The clear feel and sound of the switch clicking on ditto makes tight and precise looping a breeze. With the boss it always feels a bit slower and less responsive stomping on the switch which has a longer travel to it. Another thing that is again a more general boss pedal problem is the rubber foot. If you want to use it on a pedal board with a velcro strip removing that is a pain haven't even done that on mine though it's much easier with WD-40. Check out another previous Fred Tips video on how to do that. Uh, well, I'm giving this one to Ditto. Now, let's see, round one was boss, round two boss, round three boss, and rounds four and five Ditto. So, should boss win this battle? In my opinion, no. The simplicity of Ditto the ease of use, the no-nonsense clicking switch, small footprint and finally audio quality. Those are the essential things I want from a stripped down basic looper I'm using for working out ideas and solos on the fly. Everything else that Boss put in there didn't really improve on the basic concept. It just got it closer to the more advanced models, uh, the RC3 and RC30. With the modes and additional functionality making the learning curve steeper, and the optional additional foot switch eating up your pedal board real estate. Even the expanded 12 minutes without loop quantize, you know, use, utilizing that time is gonna be pretty hard. Unless you wanna plug in an MP3 player and record a longer backing track, which doesn't make that much sense if you only have a single memory slot. So, why use the Boss RC1? Well, reason number one is if you use stereo effects in a stereo setup. But if you already have a more advanced setup, you might as well go with the RC3. Some food for thought right there. Then there's reason number two, using the stereo for keyboards. That's actually a pretty good reason to get one over the ditto. And reason number three, and that's what I use it for, plugging in two different instruments into the inputs and going to two different amps. I plug a bass guitar into input A and an electric or acoustic into input B, with outputs going to respective bass and acoustic or electric amps. To sum up, the boss has plenty of bells and whistles, but as a basic looper, you can't really beat Ditto. So winner, Tease Electronic Ditto. If you wanna keep up with fret tips, click the subscribe button, hit that like, and if you have more tips on looping, fill the comment section below. Stay tuned for more pedal battles on Fretips.